Welcome to our symposium. I think we need to focus on history, not only because saving the documents that we have that we're talking about today is important, but I think it's also important to, to look at history as a, as a method to kind of heal some wounds and maybe to bind us together a little bit and take those historical examples that are pertinent today. Because I'm a believer, you know, I was in the legislature for six years and I came to conclude that there are no new public policy issues. Nothing's new. It's got different names and different players and different times, but it's the same stuff that happened before. Latour was convinced that if the Spanish don't put up a wall, they don't put up a wall, Americans are going to flood into Texas. In fact, he said that should Spain not do something, the time will come and unfortunately is not far off when the Americans will pour in myriads into Mexico. So they won't even go just to Texas, but they'll make it all the way to Mexico. But it was a treasury that was established despite a lack of funds. They had no money on hand and they had no money which could be dispersed. As soon as they received contributions, it was dispersed. But the importance of uh, having regular cl claims against the government properly audited, having regular accounts kept, and having assistance of checks and balances was not lost on the new government. So the government spent money that they didn't have, and they issued promissory notes against future revenues. So nothing really has changed, has it? What's the takeaway? What happens if Houston had gotten his way? The Texian army marches into East Texas. Santana pursues Houston across the Natchez River and Gaines intervenes. The battle that follows is an American victory. Texas takes the fast track to annexation. The Republic of Texas exists for one year instead of 10. Texans failed to develop a national character. The Republic of Texas plays little or no role in the emerging Texan identity. And the Republic of Texas plays no role in the evolving myth and mystique. No Texas exceptionalism. And modern Texans would likely act like those other people. <laughs> I started doing research and I stumbled across this story by a general named Phyllis Sola and he was talking about getting stuck in the mud between the Bernardos. Well, right there in Wharton County we have the San Bernard, the West Bernard, and the Middle Bernard River. I didn't know exactly where they were, but I knew they were there and, and I started reading about all the stuff that they dropped and I started thinking, well, maybe we can find that. And uh, it was probably silly of me to think so. Uh, I always tell people that the only reason I, that I actually found the Sea of Mud in the Mexican Army was because I was stupid enough to think that I could. Oh, there are. Texas history is such a uh, involved thing that uh, it's, it's all interesting, isn't it? Thank you very much, and let me... Poster. And then you have wonderful pictures about Washington County and have wonderful statements from famous people about their love for Texas. And it's all to honor the 175th and those 59 signers that actually wrote the Constitution and declared independence. What a great idea. It is fun. You know, and so we do this, guess what this is, like the little coin purse from the 18th century. And the it's a beautiful book. It has short biographies of notable Texans from the far distant past, but also some that you'll know and recognize, like Barbara Jordan. I always like to look at the end that. Me too. <laughs> uh, Good night is buried on the north side of the road. Cemetery's up there, grave well marked. She knew some people down in Paladuro Canyon, and she says if you go to a certain place down in there, there are like piles of horse skulls down there still. He says, well, I guess I just can't help it. And the friend says, well, 
said, what did you find? And he says, look at this. My great-grandfather was a Yankee, and I nearly <laughs> fell off the chair, just died laughing. It was the only one known to exist, the only Mexican howitzer shell. There were some fragments, and there was one whole one at the Alamo, but they didn't know it was Alamo. Territory. See, here's where you went wrong. You didn't take my advice, Greg. Never trust the government. <laughs> <laughs> You betcha. Nice to meet you. This is when everybody heard that Santa Ana was coming, and these women who were home with their children because their men were off fighting um, had to gather up all the family possessions and hurry east as quickly as they could, trying to get back onto U.S. soil because Santa Ana was known to kill women and children. So this runaway scrape was a horrid, horrid thing. Very, very personal letter where he talks about, you know, please kiss my son for me, you know, I miss you so much. You know, beautiful thoughts to his wife. Debris can't spell, this would be great for students to look at. You can see this online. He writes everything phonetically. It's pretty hard for us to, to uh, trans transcribe, but this is not some bumpkin. You know, listen to what he says. Justice to mankind and honor to my country, which will leave no blemish behind when time will be no more. Incredibly poetic. Mm -hmm. I think one of my favorite parts of our collection is definitely our court of claims, because they're making their claim for their land grant, so they're, they're telling you all that they can, you know, and so you've got... You've got people like Francisco Esparza saying, I went into the Alamo and got my brother's body, you know, and Susanna Dickinson saying, yeah, he was there. What year is this man? Um, it's undated, but we think it's from the uh, late 1830s or early 1840s. Wow. That's interesting. Already the, it's all divided up in the plots. Oh, but maybe there is a 89. It be an 89. That looks like 89 right there, maybe. Fire hole. Fire and hole. We hope. Fire! You have to keep your powder dry and, and, and your tinder and things like that because water is the enemy. The, the neat thing about black powder is that if you get it wet, you can spread it out on a piece of paper or a cloth or something like that and let the sun get to it and dry it out and it works just as well as as when uh, oh, you sure bet. when it before it well. To the left, oblique. Fire! Recover! If you look at the bottom of the piece of type, you'll see that it actually, it's you've got a line on it. And those are called feet. Yeah. Ready to print? Ready to print. Okay, I'm going to put a card in here up against the guides. Push that down with all your strength. Okay. Did you feel that? Uh huh. Beautiful. Cool. Let's do another one. Right. Okay. It's real neat to yeah. take a look at that. Now, how big is that map? That map? 49 by 40 inches oh, yeah. big, so that's huge. I guess the smaller one, even though it's beat up. That one. What do you think? What would you do? I like that one because it, it is beat up. The, I think the colors pop a little bit better whenever it's on this kind of uh -huh. this kind of light tannish. Uh -huh. And also the fact that it's got the old land office building, I think that's kind of cool. Really? Uh, whenever you take a look at these maps that have got all these tears and you put it in a frame yeah. uh, under glass, uh -huh. It's going to look just like the real one, oh, okay. uh, the one that we have in the building. Okay, so, so I, I think that's I think that's the best one. It's a nice size. Thank you very much. Thank you. But well, welcome to the GLO Symposium surveying exercise. What we're going to talk about and simulate today is a settler coming into Texas, the Republic or the state of Texas with his or her certificate to a land grant and getting that land grant located on the ground. And the first place they went was usually to the county surveyor's office or a district surveyor's office. And so you look on this map and you see the areas that aren't covered by surveys previously located. You'll notice that along the river, it's pretty much already located. So you would tell the surveyor, I want to locate my 640 acres right 
there adjacent to this Baker survey. He would then go on the ground and he would have to locate at least one corner of this survey to get started from, okay? And then he would proceed to lay out your survey adjacent to that one. Bill. <laughs> Giving you this job. See? I can't see so. that way a little bit. Okay, so just a tiny little bit. Oh, that's perfect right there. Yeah, that's good. See, that's good. Yep. All right, good job. Mm -hmm.